everybody. Welcome to Happy Healthy You, the podcast. I'm Connie Bowman, and I'm here today with Lois Ann Smith, one of my favorite people, one of so many people's favorites. She is a spiritual medium, a facilitator of healing for so many. She has helped so many people through life's journeys. And now Lois Ann is an author. She's the author of a new book called Light in the Night, Spirit Photography at the Cottage. Welcome, Lois Ann. Thank you so much for coming again to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Connie. I love your book. I downloaded it to my Kindle on my iPad, and I've been reading it on my iPad. And I don't know if you know this or not, but when you put it on your iPad, you can actually blow up, not blow up, but (laughs) make bigger the images, the beautiful images that you have in the book. Wonderful. So all of the images of the spiritual energy that you have in this book, Light in the Night, I made bigger and I could see the detail which you talk about. It's so beautiful. The book is awesome. Congratulations. Thank you, Connie. Thank you. I'm so glad you are resonating with it. Oh, it's awesome. I personally have seen these orbs in my pictures and I always wonder, is this really an orb or is this a light from my photography or is it, you know, how does that work? So we'll talk about that a little bit later. What inspired you to write this book? A A friend of mine in uh, 2010 it was, I sent an email out and said, why don't you go out uh, Christmas evening and stand under the night sky and receive a special Christmas blessing. And I really resonate with the night sky and the stars and the moon. Mm -hmm. So I thought that sounded like a lot of fun. So when the day was over with and night came and the house was quiet, I went outside and stood under the stars. And it just so happens I took my camera with me and I snapped one picture. And when I came back in and looked at it, it was this amazing light image on my camera. And I've been fascinated with capturing spirit photography ever since. What is your understanding of the orbs that you ca- captured in your in your photography? Well, it's interesting you talked about refractive light because there are a lot of images that we do pick up on our cam- on cameras or mm-hmm. on the photos that we take that actually aren't orbs. So let's talk about what they aren't, and then we'll talk about what they are. Okay. Okay. So there is a phenomena called refracted light that happens and it's beautiful but it's not orbs and that happens when you shoot directly into a light source whether it's Mm. a light in your home or it's a light coming in through the window and it certainly makes orb like photos Mm -hmm. um, but it's really refracted light another phenomena happens when you Uh, take pictures while it's snowing or raining and you'll pick up that energy on the camera. I'm sure many of us have photos that we take during the snow and we get round circles but they just look like circles of white because of the the way the light is hitting the snow. And one other phenomena happens Connie that's actually condensation on the camera lens and that'll happen when you go outside and it's either a humid evening in the summertime or the camera's been warm inside and you go outside and it's very cold. Mm -hmm. You'll get a haze over it and it looks like orb circles, but there's actually no definition and everything else in the picture is behind the orbs. Does that make sense? Yes, I've I've seen all three of those, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so real orbs, which are um, many people do have those on their photos. As a matter of fact, a great way to start out is look at the photos that you already have. And chances are there's one or more orbs on them. Real orbs, um, in the very beginning of this process, when they first started showing up in my photos, I didn't know what they were. And I've done a lot of research and a lot of soul searching and actually even meditating with the energies of the orbs. And I would put them today in three categories. One is our own emanated energy. Okay. Now, we all know people that we absolutely love to be around. Right. Okay. They just have good vibes. Yes. Yeah. And that's because they're emanating a, a, a uplifting, positive energy. And that can actually be captured on the camera lens, especially on a digital camera. And there's an example of it in my book. 
I actually had an experience when I first started to realize that some of these words were our own emanated energy. I had experience of speaking at a woman's retreat and afterwards we had dinner and I was sitting around the table with these amazing women and they were all sharing very personal truths with one another and I was just struck by the truth telling that was being told at the table that I turned to the woman sitting next to me and spontaneously shared something with her that I had never shared with anybody before. And when I came home that evening, I felt like a weight had lifted off of me that I didn't even know I'd been carrying. Wow. And I went out into the garden around the cottage and I sat under my maple tree and I took my camera and I held it up to my throat chakra and I kept saying, I told, I told, while I took photos. And there's actually a picture in the book of what telling my truth looked like. Wow. How did you come, how did you, the idea come to you to, uh, to photograph that? Well, after that Christmas evening, mm -hmm. I never went into the garden without my camera. Oh, so then okay. I just, every chance I got, if I got a prompting to go outside, meaning I got this um, excited feeling in my stomach, or I got this awareness that the garden was just calling me, I'd go out and I'd spend hours out there taking photos in all different sections of the property. So by that time, I never went out without my okay. camera. Okay, so so that experience, y you came to the conclusion that that was your own emanating em energy, yes. your own emanation. Yes. So what other types of energy comes through on these photographs? I believe that some of the orbs that we see, especially photos taken of family gatherings, celebrations, baptisms, weddings, graduations, are actually our loved ones that have gathered with our family, our loved ones in spirit that have gathered. Those orbs are larger than our own emanated energy. They're larger and they have a little bit more color in them and they'll have more detail. They're very intricate in their designs. Mm, and you can really see those in your, the pictures in your book if you put it on your Kindle and or yes. on your iPad and you, you blow it up. Wow, that's really interesting. One time my husband and I were at my college, we went back for a reunion and someone took our picture and we met at college. And um, a lot of you know that my first daughter, Megan, died when she was six, uh, 23 years ago. When I had those pictures um, processed, there were two orbs and mm -hmm. right above us. And it was funny because we took some pictures of one of my other friends who also, they didn't meet in college, but they, were, they got together while they were in college. And she had lost a brother and she too had an an orb and they were good yes. size they were yes. they were pretty good size i'll have to go back and look at them but th those are the ones that come to mind um okay so we have our own emanations we have the loved ones that come through and then and then what we else? have then we have higher vibration beings and those beings those orbs fall into categories that we would say are spirit guides healers, teachers, counselors, those beings in the spirit realm that are around us all the time, that want nothing but to um, encourage us and be a cheerleader for us, so to speak, in our lives. So it's nothing we need to worry about. It's, it's higher energies. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And one of the, the other inspiration for the book was with so many ghost hunting shows and mm -hmm. vampire shows and that really has clouded our, for many of us, it's clouded our connection with home with, uh, we could say, a cloak or an element of fear when really nothing could be further from the truth. I agree with you. I, we just came off of Halloween. Mm -hmm. And one of my big problems with Halloween, well, I don't want to take away the fun from the kids and trick or treating and the camaraderie and all the costume and the, you know, the, the joy of that. I do feel that the, there is an element of fear that's brought in with all the, the ghouls and the, and the way we treat death. And here we are trying to raise our children with a healthy uh, relationship to death because Correct. You know, that's how we grow up to be psychologically and emotionally healthy in this world. Yeah. And here we, we do this once a year in our country. We have this Halloween celebration that is, it's not the way it should be. I, I agree with you. 
I agree. I agree. And I think if we go back into those traditions and look at where they originally came from, it really takes the creepiness out of it. Sure. But right. we've lost that, unfortunately. Right. We've lost that. Okay, so how is it that the camera can pick up the energy of the energy? Yeah. Higher is- vibrations. It actually started in 1988 with the advent of digital cameras. Uh-huh. And it rarely happened before with film cameras. I don't want to say it never happened, but it rarely happened. Okay. But with the digital camera, the digital camera has the ability, as we see with mammograms and other testing now that they're using digital photography, it just picks up things, energies that often uh, we weren't able to before. Interesting. Yeah. And, and I've heard of Curlian photography, this, but this is different. Yes, it is. Okay. Because I'm using all the pictures in Light in the Night were used with just a standard digital camera, no even specific settings. I just use factory wow. factory settings. Now, I know in the book you talk about how to maximize the potential of picking up these orbs, but I, I wanted to ask you, how uh, where are we most likely to be able to photograph? Are there certain places? Is nature better? I know you mentioned when families gather. Are there other places that we are more likely to get them in our camera? I would say anywhere, but certainly it increases the odds if you're in an environment that you absolutely love. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I happen to love nature, so I really resonate with that, and I try to garden I try to garden in a way that I look around my yard and say, oh my gosh, I love that tree, or I love the way this bush has bloomed. And I'm very connected to my garden, so that works for me. But it's really whatever your passion is. If it's music, take pictures at, at concerts or oh, when you go to see this, uh, hear the symphony. If it's um, if you just absolutely love being with friends and family, then then um, go to dances and things like that where there's a lot of energy going on. Okay, I like that idea. Now we're sitting here recording this in your beautiful cottage, and it's such a Oh, gosh, I think I said when I came in here, that I just love being here. And everybody loves being here because we feel so welcomed and warm and safe. And it's got palpable energy and beauty. And a lot of your pictures that you've taken that you've included in the book were taken right around the cottage. Do you feel like that has lent itself to getting more photographs of Higher energies, higher vibration energy. Absolutely. And it may be a combination, Connie. First of all, many of the photos taken in the book were taken on very special nights. Uh, Three of them, three of the main ones were taken on Christmas night. The one of the joy guide was taken on a lunar eclipse uh, Mm -hmm. right around midnight. So I think that there, it's a combination of me being in my element and the energy of the cottage, as well as these special windows, if you want to say, uh, opportunities that open. There's no doubt about it that the energy of the cottage is very special, in part because I'm living uh, my passion and in part because the spirit realm meets me at that place. Um, So I think we're in partnership with it. And my dream when I first built the cottage years ago was that it would be a place that if people feel safe and that people could let go of the worries and the stress that they've been carrying and maybe walk away with a new perspective of life or or a new um, being recharged and and um, re-energized. So that's been my goal. So it makes me very happy that you say you experience that. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, I don't feel the energy of the cottage, but I don't feel it because I live in it. So I just I'm one with it, but we're all one with our favorite spaces, and it's it's the same as when we leave our jobs during the day and we walk into our homes, and our homes feel so good because it's our space and it's our energy, and that makes that place sacred as well. I feel like there are no accidents, and the fact that we have these digital cameras that can now see these things that we couldn't see before. Do you feel intuitively that these these energies that are coming through now have a specific message? And through your book, <laughs> we are we are to take a certain message from them. Absolutely, and I would say there's several, but the main one is that we're not alone. 
If we're in a place in our lives that is joyful and loving and beautiful and peaceful, they celebrate that with us. If we're in a place that is challenging and we're stressed and things are difficult right now, we're not alone in that. And they have a tremendous amount of compassion and support and understanding for us and want nothing but to say, we're not here by ourselves. Mm. That's awesome. What a great place to leave it. And to find light in the night, where can we go? It's on Amazon and all the It's on Amazon, usual. Barnes & Noble, and it's certainly available uh, for sale here in the cottage. And for more information about you? Um, you can go to my website, which is loisannsmith.com. And Lois, if some of us are able to get some pictures on our, our cameras, do you have a Facebook page? Are you? Are I you, do. Um, I have a Facebook page called Light in the Night, and you're more than welcome. Um, I'm always posting new photos there that I take in the gardens of the cottage, and people are more than welcome to ask me questions or post their own photos. Oh, cool, because I think that would be fun to, to join that page. So I just have to like you. Yes. <laughs> Light in the Night. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed your book, and I'm sure anybody else who picks it up it's it's a really fascinating look into spirit energy that's all around us thanks Lois thank you so much Connie